Hey guys, it's Josh. Um, here today I'm here with a video project that um, I've wanted to do for quite a while now, but I feel like now is the perfect time. If you did not know already, in exactly two days I am going to be moving out of moving out of my house that I'm living in with my family. Obviously, I've been living here for well, I've been living with my family for over 18 years, and I am moving out to go to college, and I'm going to be living on my own in the summer and with a roommate in the fall. So, um, I feel like since I am moving on into a new stage of my life where I'm a, pretty much an adult and I'm much more independent, um, I decided to go a little nostalgia trip. Um, and I did this with a purpose. Um, since, in 2010, mid-2010, I thought of this idea called the Nostalgia Box. And what this is, is that I said I would take it out when I go to college, right before I go to college, um, and open it up. I have been putting every movie ticket, convention ticket, arcade thing, um, anything that I could find, really, like stubs, anything like that, into this box of nostalgia, I like to call it. And I've just, I've just been piling up to the top ever since. And I started this in mid-2010, so summer of 2010. Which means exactly, f almost exactly five years ago, I started this project. So um, I decided since I'm going away, it's the perfect time I'm going to crack it open and see what's in store for me. This is going to be an assault trip. It's probably going to be done in multiple cuts because um, right now I'm alone. I don't know when I won't be alone and stuff like that. So it's probably going to be done in multiple cuts. It's going to be a long project. Um, so sit back, relax, enjoy. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go a little bit quickly. Maybe I'll talk about more things in the last, but. Let's get started here. Um, how it's probably structured, I assume it's going to be a little bit of a shuffle. I'm assuming newer stuff on the top and lower st older stuff on the bottom. That might not be the case. I'm going to go in completely random order. So here's my ticket for um, Mad Max Fury Road, which we just saw a couple of weeks ago. Um, like I said, it was okay. Nothing special. Nothing really to talk about other than we saw it with the group, the crew, the meme team. We like to call it, and it's going to be great. It's going to be, I'm going to miss them a lot when I go away, but um, Juliet and Keanu are coming in the fall, though, and they're going to be like five minutes away from me then, so won't be a problem. Um, yeah. Let's see what's next. Next is a movie ticket to Avengers Age of Ultron. I don't remember if this is the first or second time I saw it. June 6th. So this is the first time I saw Avengers Age of Ultron. Amazing movie. Lived up to the hype. Definitely enjoyed it. Another movie I saw with the entire meme team. Okay, let's see what we got here. Oh, this is the movie I just saw last night. I just put this in last night. Jurassic World. Um, I haven't talked about this yet. No, you have no idea what my opinions are on this movie. I thought it was great. It was a great tribute to the first film. Felt a lot like the first film, therefore I really enjoyed it. The characters were pretty good. Um, what's her name? The redhead chick was gorgeous. But other than that, great movie. Jurassic World. Okay, here we go. This was a Union Ticket to Universal Studios, one of one of the times that I went, let's see. Oh, it was Grab Bash. That was about two months ago at this point. You saw the blog for that probably. Grab Bash is when and when you're graduating high school, all the um, the high schools go to Universal Studios Islands Adventure for overnight. It was a pretty amazing night with the meme team. It was great. I loved it. I had so much fun. And yeah, it was a great memory. Let's see what's next. This is a the second this is the first or second time. Oh no, June 6th was the second time I saw Avengers Age of Ultron. This was the first, with, I saw it with jo Red Josh and Alberto because we wanted to show in the movie. This is the first time I saw Avengers Age of Ultron. I knew that because that looked like a Frank sticker and I saw the first Avengers Age of Ultron showing at Movie Co. Um, yeah, there's Avengers Age of Ultron. Uh, I already talked about it, so nothing more. That was the first time I saw it. What is this? This is some receipt. I don't know what this is. Never mind. That was accidentally put in there. Uh, here we go. We have Spongebob, Sponge Out of Water, another this year one. Um, Sponge Out of Water was not a very good movie. I mean, there were some elements I liked, like the new kid, dolphin character, but other than that, I was not impressed. Hillenburg, I mean, if you return it, it would be great and all, but I don't think this was your callback. But, um, yeah. Disappointing Spongebob movie. Um... Let's see what else we got here. Oh, here's a big one. Oh, uh, this was to the Florida Arcade and Pinball Expo. You probably saw the vlog for that. 
It was um, a good day. I enjoyed it. I, I kind of enjoyed going to Tate's more at Tate's Central more after. But um, this was it was a pretty good day. I mean, it wasn't worth the $25 admission. Like, I wouldn't go again, but I had a good time. We played a lot of arcade games. We walked around. We played Smash. And we went to Tate's after, drank some Mountain Dew. So, I mean, it was overall a good day. Not a strong convention, but a good day nonetheless. What's this? This seems old. This one, no, this isn't that old. This is when we, last December, when we saw Horrible Bosses 2. I saw it with Zack and Red Josh. Um, great, great sequel. Um, I think it was just as good, if not better, than the first one. And Horrible Bosses 2 was a definitely a worthy sequel, just as good, if not better, as the first one. I'm a big Horrible Bosses fan. One of my favorite comedies, so this was definitely a worthy worth seeing. Um... Another universal ticket. This was Halloween Horror Nights 2014. Um, Halloween Horror Nights is always great. I love the houses. Went with um, Taylor, Juliet, uh, and Zach, and it was really fun. So Halloween Horror Nights is always worth the money. It's always a great, great trip. Not universal. What's this? This is a few months ago, too. This was, um, oh, my God. This was a long time ago. I thought it was a few months ago. This was half a year ago. This was January uh, 25th. We saw a Hairspray at my old school. We remember we went with Zach, Red Josh, and Alberto. It was an interesting time. And Sam. It was, it was an interesting time. I mean, it was a pretty shitty play. Other than production, other than the fact that um, there was this camera guy in the background that was going like this, and it was pretty funny. But other than that, I mean, not much to say we went to see a play. This. This was PomCon 2014. PomCon was a con that evolved. It started off really bad, and we still kept them going anyway, just for the stuff. PomCon 2014, what? 2013 was the first year where it was big. 2014 was amazing. Best PomCon yet. Definitely worth going to. That's where Zach got the Fleur drawing. We had a fellow Fleur fan. A lot of crazy stuff happened. We went to Buffalo Wild Wings for the first time. Great con. Definitely worth the price of admission. What's this? This is a um, ticket for Guardians of the Galaxy, a movie that I was so extremely hyped for because Chris Pratt was in it. It was a Marvel Studios film. It was obscure. Um, it was just an overall amazing movie with an amazing soundtrack and amazing cinematography and amazing comedy. And it's one of my favorite Marvel Cinematic Universe movies. And I saw this with Zach, Red, Josh, and Alberto, and it's a great movie. I would highly recommend seeing it. Here is... Um, I'm going to save that for last, because this is what I remember is the first thing I put in the box, so I don't want to really show that yet. Here is, um, oh, this is really faded. Ticket Movie tickets fade, and I always forget that. I'm hoping that the ones on the bottom I can read. This is when I saw The Wolf of Wall Street in January of 2014. So that was um, a year and a half ago. Wolf of Wall Street was a great movie. Martin Scorsese is one of my favorite filmmakers working today. He's, um, Leonardo DiCaprio is an amazing actor. Jonah Hill's in it. Great movie. Very vulgar, though. I saw this with um, some of my New York friends that I don't get to see only once every couple of years, and it was an amazing experience seeing them. Um, so it was definitely a great movie. Yeah. Let's see what this is. Uh, now it's all really shuffled. I'm not going to know what this is. Oh! This was a um, presentation I was required to see in... Fall 2013 at um, school at um, FAU. Um, Jeffrey Morton, who I ended up taking as a teacher in a later semester, who is an amazing guy. He's really interesting. He's just a little dry in his in his um, speaking and teaching, but he's really a really riveting guy. Like he has an amazing life of stories and everything. Um, he did a lecture on the role of diplomacy in 20th century, 21st century American foreign policy. And it was a really interesting presentation. That's what made me want to take his class. So, um, yeah, so it was a really interesting presentation. Here is um, PomCon 2013, first good PomCon. I went to this with Kiana, Zach, and... Kiana, Zach, and Valentina. Valentina's a friend I haven't seen in years. I really should keep in touch with her. But, um, yeah, we went to this con. It was really fun. I think my vlog's still up on my old channel. I'm not sure. But, yeah... PomCon 2013. It's really random order now. I have no idea what I'm going to get. Um, 
This is almost too faded to see. How to Train Your Dragon 2. I don't remember if this is the first or second time I saw it. Great movie. Better than the first one. Not a perfect movie by all means. I give it like an 8 out of 10. Um, really enjoyable. Highly recommend it. Anime movie. I saw this with Haram, who is a friend I don't get to see. And Haram and Valentina. Two friends I don't get to see a lot. So, that was the second time. The first time I saw it with Alberto. Zach, I don't remember which one it was. This one is, oh man, my IMAX ticket to Iron Man 3. What a disappointing movie. Iron Man 1 and 2 are amazing. Iron Man 3 was pretty much shit, but it wasn't, like, it wasn't terrible, but it was just not as good as the first two. And um, I saw this with my dad. It was an IMAX. This was, right, like, when I started my first internship, and it was really an interesting time in my life, so this is a great memory. Support our Otter Ambassadors. I don't know. Some tickets fade, some tickets don't. I hope I don't have too many faded ones. This is to... Um, Movie The Judge. This was um, last December. It was the day before New Year's. So, um, yeah, The Judge, pretty good movie. Nothing special, but decent nonetheless. I mean, I saw this with Alberto. We were waiting for his oil change or something, his car to get fixed or something. So we were waiting there all day. So we're like, why don't we see a movie? And we saw the movie The Judge. So, yeah. What's this? This is... um. Is this the first time? or This is the first time I saw The Fault in Our Stars. I, the first time I saw I saw it was Zach um, and my sister. And it was... Um, and it, I'm a huge John Green fan. John Green's my favorite author and my, probably my biggest inspiration. So I was really hyped that one of his books was getting to movie. It is my least favorite of the, his books that I've read. However, it's still a amazing 9 out of 10 book. The movie was a 10 out of 10 movie. It was so good. I think I might have liked the movie better than the book. So, um, every performance of it was amazing. The acting was amazing. The cinematography. Josh Boone, you really know how to make a film. Yeah, I saw, yeah, so. Good movie. Here's the second time I saw The Fault in Our Stars. With, I saw this with Haram and Valentina. We did a double feature where we saw How to Train Your Dragon 2 and then The Fault in Our Stars. Didn't cry the first time I saw the movie. Cried the second time because I truly could sit back and appreciate how masterful this movie was. Um, yeah, so this, that's pretty much it. What's this? This is, uh, Tammy. I saw this with Aaron, who you've only seen once on the vlog. I saw it last summer right off, right before I was going to go off to SJI. And, uh, man, was this movie terrible. It was such a shitty movie. It was just boring. It wasn't funny. It was supposed to be a comedy. It was supposed to be a comedy, and it was disguising itself as comedy, but it was really a drama. It was so poorly done. The acting was terrible. The story was terrible. The, the writing was terrible. It was a terrible, terrible movie. One of the worst of that year that I saw. So I, I got to hang out there, and that was pretty much the only good thing about that. Anchorman 2. Not as good as the first one, but still a worthy sequel nonetheless. That's why I own it on DVD. Hilarious comedy. The battle at the end, I think, was better than the battle in the first one. But um, Anchorman, I'm a huge fan, especially since going into journalism and stuff like telecom and stuff. Anchorman is a hilarious movie that explores that field. Anchorman, the first one, is probably in my top 20 movies of all time. It's just so funny. Probably one of my favorite comedies. If you haven't seen the Anchorman duo, go watch it. They're probably going to make a third one. Because this isn't The Legend Concludes. The Legend Continues. So, um... Will Ferrell's amazing, um, Steve Carell's amazing, Paul Rudd's amazing in that movie. Definitely check it out, the Anchorman movies. This was Anchorman 2. I saw that with um, Zach and Dylan. Haven't seen Dylan in a while either. Just got an email. I'll check that later. Okay, next is uh, Thor The Dark World. Not as good as the first one, but still a good movie nonetheless. Um, it had plenty of flaws, but it was still an enjoyable popcorn flick. Um... I'm a huge Marvel Cinematic Universe fan, so pretty good movie. I saw this with Juliet and Taylor. They both loved it. I loved it. I think Loki was amazing in this movie. Probably his best, Tom Hiddleston's best performances in this movie. So um, I haven't seen any of his like small indie films, but um, his big, big performance, I think this was his best one yet. So um, still a good movie. Nothing special, though. Here's a Boomer's play card. I don't remember what time this was when I went to Boomer's because there's no date on it. I must have went to Boomers one time and got this play card. This could have been my most recent time um, when we went after Avengers Age Ultron. I don't remember. It, uh, I don't know if it is or not, but one time I went to Boomers. 
Enough said. Here's another card here on the side. Oh, this is when I went. We were waiting around for either Alberto or my dad to pick us up. I can't really remember. So oh, a little over a year ago, probably. Um, me and Zach, and we decided to go to the arcade in Frank's Theaters and just check it out. It was $10, not worth $10. There's barely anything there. There's just over-glorified iPhone games in arcades lately, and I find that really strange. But, um, yeah, so it wasn't really worth going, but paid $10 for this card. Might as well keep it. What's next? This is the second time I saw... How to Train Your Dragon 2. I said it again. I saw it with Harama Valentina. So, yeah. Grand Budapest Hotel. I am a huge. I saw this with Alberto. He's never seen a Wes Anderson film before this movie. I am a huge Wes Anderson film. He's a fan. He's one of my favorite filmmakers of all time. One of my creative inspirations. Moonrise Kingdom is probably. One of the technical best movies ever made. I love it so much. And then Grand Hoost Hotel wasn't as good as Moonrise Kingdom, but still very, very close. And I really enjoyed it. The performances in this movie were amazing. Probably the best cinematography in any movie that I could think of. It was... What an amazing, amazing movie. I loved it so much. It's very, it's a very smart comedy. It's a, it's a situational comedy built on awkward situations and encounters. And it's very, very funny, but also very, very serious and a very good social commentary. So I would definitely check out The Grand Poop West Hotel. Alberto liked it, and he's not a Wes Anderson fan, so. Halloween Horror Nights 2013. Went with Juliet, Taylor, Zach. We had a great time. Great Halloween Horror Nights. Every Halloween Horror Nights is great. Those were the two I went to. You saw the tickets universal. What's this? Sesame Street. Oh, this was probably when I went to Bush Gardens with, um, they probably gave me this as my ticket. I don't know why. It just says Sesame Street. But, um, oh, it's for a photo. We must have taken a photo around the Sesame Street section. We went to, there's another, I don't know if there's another ticket in there for this or not. Um, me, Kiana, Juliet, Taylor, and John went to, um, Bush Gardens. It was a great time. This was before Zach hung out with us. So, um, it was John. John kind of sort of trickle out of a but he's a really social person, so he talk, he's like trickles through a lot of groups, so, but yeah, it was a really fun time, got to go on all the rides, great, um, this was a photo slip we must have gotten, what's this, this is Rise of the Guardians, wow, this was a long time ago, this was 20, late 2012, um, I saw this with, um, Kiana, we both really enjoyed it. We're amazing, amazing animation. Very underrated movie because no one talks about this movie and it was an amazing feat in animation. And I don't really know why no one talks about it because it was so great. And it came up to a very famous character that many people know the movie from. Jack Frost, the modern interpretation of Jack Frost, came from this movie. And not a lot of people know about that. So, um, yeah, very excellent anima CG animated film. Um, both Keanu and I really enjoyed it, so... This is a t the I noticed the Frank's tickets are the ones that fade, not the other tickets. This was to the Lego Movie, very overrated movie. I didn't like it that much. It was okay, nothing special. A ton of people loved it a lot more than I did. I don't really see it. I saw this with Alberto, and he loved it. No, he liked it a lot. He said it was nothing special, but he really liked it. I didn't like it as much as he did. I gave it like a six out of ten. He gave it like an eight out of ten. So it was. I mean, it wasn't bad. It just wasn't great. Same opinion as Mad Max, pretty much, for me. This is, um... This was 2013. So this would have been the second Hobbit, Desolation of Smog. Um, this was before... This was still an amazing movie. Um, was not as good as the first Hobbit. First Hobbit film is the only one I say is as good as Lord of the Rings movies. Um, the second Hobbit, Desolation of Smog, was a great, amazing movie. Probably a 9 out of 10 movie. Just didn't have this one little tinge that made it like the, the first one, Unexpected Journey. But I would still recommend it if you're a Tolkien fan, especially for the scene where it saw in a real scene. Saw that with Alberto and Zach. Zach did not like the first Hobbit movie. He did not like this one either. Um, Alberto liked the first Hobbit movie, and he loved that one. So he, I think he liked this one better than the first one. But 
Now we got Neighbors, a surprisingly good comedy with Seth Rogen and Zac Efron. I'm a huge Seth Rogen fan. He's hilarious. His writing is amazing. I am not a big Zac Efron fan. Um, but I think they worked well together, surprisingly. And um, what's her name? I can't remember the actress's name, but um, the, she's British. She's in a lot of these comedies. She was so funny in this movie. This was her best role to date, probably other than Insidious. This was her best role to date. So um, I can't remember her name off the top of my head, but Neighbors was not that bad. Um, let's see what's next. What's this? This is a ticket to... Uh, I have no idea what these tickets are. Oh! This is my ticket to Moonrise Kingdom. Um, one of my favorite movies of all time. I already talked about Moonrise Kingdom. Great movie. I saw this with Dylan. We both loved it. We were both the only ones laughing in the theater at the funny scenes, though, because it was all people that really got the humor. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Great movie. still remember what I ate and drank during that movie. I ate Cola Favor gummy, bear, gummy bears, you know, those things. And I drank Mountain Dew. For some reason. This is, um... Is this Rise or Dawn of the Planet of the Apes? 2014. So that would have been Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. I did not care for Rise of the Planet of the Apes that much. But Dawn of the Planet of the Apes was a 10 out of 10 movie. It was so fucking good. It was probably the second best movie of 2014. It was, it was tremendous, and it's surprising, because I'm not a big Planet of the Apes fan, and I love this movie so much. It was, it's pretty much a, similar to Lion King, but maybe a tinge better? I'm not sure. It's a very adult movie, though, so, yeah, great, great movie. What's this? This is very crushed up. Speaking of Lion King, 2011, Lion King 3D. Lion King was reanimated and re-released in theaters in 3D for a limited time. Alberto and I, being huge Lion King fans, we went to see this, and we were, it was all kids except for us, and we were talking throughout the whole movie because the kids were talking so we could talk too, and we were very much giving a commentary, and it was an amazing experience. The animation was far increased much better, even though the animation in the first movie was the original was amazing. If you were, it's not available anymore, obviously, but if you had the chance to see this in theaters, it was extremely worth it, even though you had to pay like 15 bucks for a movie you could just watch on your VHS tape at home. It was a great experience. I loved it so much. Lion King's still amazing the animated movie, so, yeah. Mostly these are movie tickets, obviously. Uh, I don't know if we could have, this is when I saw The Wolverine with um, Dylan. Um, great X-Men movie. Um, not really an X-Men movie. Wolverine's the only X-Man in it. Yeah, other than flashbacks, but um, to me, I prefer the X Men to franchise to be better I, to the Marvel Cinematic Universal franchise, especially since they retconned X Men Three and X Men Origins Wolverine. So, um, and X Men Two, but X Men Two was good. So, um, Wolverine was a pretty good movie. Um, I mean, it was it was really good actually. If I'm to think about it. Um, it was only Wolverine. The Japanese um, culture and cinematography blended into the movie it was great because I'm a huge I'm a huge otaku, so um, I'm a huge admirer of Japanese culture. And um, I felt like this movie felt like an anime. It really did. Like I could totally see this being a Wolverine anime um, if they ever make that. I did read a Wolverine manga that took place in Japan. It was very similar to this movie, probably the same vein. So if you're a Jap Japanophile like me or you really like X-Men, or you're just a fan of Hugh Jackman, this is the movie for you. I saw that with Dylan. He really liked it. This is to... Speaking of X-Men, <laughs> X-Men Days of Future Past. By far my favorite X-Men movie and probably my favorite comic book movie of all time. In my top 20 favorite movies, X-Men Days of Future Past was pretty much the Avengers for X-Men, the X-Men franchise. Because as of now, we had the main X-Men trilogy, um, which was the uh, modern-day X-Men uh, at the Xavier School. And then we had the X-Men First Class series, which was um, which was in the 1960s, the original X-Men. And due to the power of time travel and the Sentinels and 
all this crazy stuff with Mystique and everything, they were able to unite the two sides and make a mass, flawless masterpiece of a movie that retconned some of the bad movies in the franchise. And um, X-Men Days of Future Past is... I, mean, I, I clapped in that movie. And I don't usually clap in a lot of movies. I clapped in this movie. I stood up and clapped. And um, it used a lot of great characters in this movie. But I cannot wait for X-Men Apocalypse after this movie. I was frozen today. I saw Frozen... I may have seen it twice in theaters. I think once. My memory is not too good. Um, it's obviously dominated pop culture. Probably one of the most pop... Probably the most popular movie of the 21st century so far. Um, Frozen just... Destroyed pop culture and became embedded in it. And a lot of people hate on it because it is so popular... I, it's a good movie. I really loved it. I really liked this movie. When I came out, I'm like, wow, this was really good. So, and my opinion still hasn't changed, despite the plan of increase in popularity and seeing it like 50 times. I've seen this movie like 20 times, to be, real, to be realistic, I'd say about and somewhere from 10 to 20 times I've seen this movie, and I still like it just as much. Um, it is a little cliche. It does have a predict predictability to it, but um, it's still a great movie nonetheless. There is another movie I prefer, but I do not have a ticket for that. Tangled, I'm going to talk about now. Tangled is my favorite Disney animated movie. I love it so much, and I don't even know why. It's just, I love it so much. I related it to it on a more profound level than Frozen. This is, um, The World's End. Third and final movie in the Cornetto trilogy by Edgar Wright. Um, I do think each, I do think the first is Shaun of the Dead is the best, then Hot Fuzz, then The World's End. They're all amazing movies, but I do think Sean of the Dead and Hot Fuzz are a little bit better. Um, World's End has amazing talent. If you're a fan of British comedy and a little bit of drier humor, um, you're definitely going to like the world, you're definitely going to like the Gordon Adelich, especially World's End. Edgar Wright's one of my favorite filmmakers. If my, any of my books ever got adapted in movies, Edgar Wright's one of the few filmmakers that I would trust with the project completely. Um, Simon Pegg is one of my favorite actors. Nick Frost is a great actor. You got Martin Freeman in here, um, as a more important role than he was in the, in, um, Hot Fuzz. Um, he was great. And there was a couple other unno really unknown actors. It was literally a British actor fest. Um, you got Bill Nye, all those people. It's, it's very, very good movie. And if you're a you're a fan of British comedy. What's next? We got... American Hustle. Um, I saw this with my aunt, my aunt, uncle, cousins, and my mom, and I thought it was very good. I mean, it was one of the, it's definitely an Oscar bait movie. It was made and designed to win awards. It was crafted to be an Oscar movie, and so what? It was crafted to be an Oscar movie, and it won a couple of Oscars, but it was still good. I mean, if you're crafting something to be an Oscar movie, it's obviously going to be good movie because all in good movies win Oscars usually. So, um, yeah, American Hustle is great. Um, probably Christian Bale's best performance yet. I think this was a little bit better than The Dark Knight. 100% Amy Adams' best performance ever. She looked great in this movie. Jennifer Lawrence, I really hated her character, so I couldn't say it was her best performance. Um, Jeremy Renner was pretty good. Um, what's it called? Really, what's his name? Why can't I remember? Oh my god, he's in this movie, he's in Silver Lines Playwork, he's in The Hangover, I can't remember his name, I'm blanking out. He's always, he used to be shitty, and now he's a great actor. He's really doing some good roles for himself. Uh, American Hustle, Oscar bait, but still good. This is um, Brave, very underrated movie. A lot of people didn't like this movie. Still, I think it's personally Pixar's one of Pixar's best. I love this movie, I related to it a lot. And um, Merida is one an amazingly designed character. Just her aesthetic as a whole, and the movie's aesthetic as a whole, for that matter, is just so enticing. And I really liked it. Um, but Merida's character design is one of my favorite character designs of any character in fiction. Even though she's not one of my favorite fictional characters, just her design is great. The, the animation is so detailed and flawless. What do you can expect from Pixar? There's a little bit of a tinge of cliché-ness in there. But other than that, I thought it was an amazing movie, and a lot of people didn't like it, and I had no idea why. I really, really love this movie. So did Zach, and I saw it with him. Next we got 12 Years a Slave. Holy shit. This is the um, Schindler's List of, this, of these past, the 21st century. 
Um, it was a very disturbing movie, but one of the best movies ever made on a technical level, if not the best. Some of the cinematography, and this is probably the best cinematography over a Grand Budapest Hotel. So the acting in this movie was flawless. The cinematography, this was a flawless masterpiece. And um, I, everyone needs to see it, no matter how disturbing it is, just because of how significant it is and how important it is in our historical context as the United States. What a fantastic movie. I saw that with my dad, mom, and sister, so just a family movie. Um, next we got Ted. This is before my first real con. I went to Supercon 2009, but I don't really count that. Supercon 2012, I saw Ted with, um, with Alberto Iman, who I haven't seen probably since we saw this movie. <laughs> And um, and Dylan right before Supercon 2012, very very funny movie, um, not as good as everyone says it is. I thought it was pretty funny though, um, better than Family Guy is because I don't really I'm not a big Family Guy man anymore. It's it's really in vain of some of the best Family Guy episodes. Ted Two looks atrocious by the way. It looks horrific. It would be surprising if it was good, um, but I, I enjoyed it enough. It was pretty decent. Some scenes were funny. Very funny, actually. It was a very funny movie. So, yeah. Next we got... Is this the first or second Captain America? Pretty good condition. Let's see the date. Oh, it's the second one. Winter Soldier. Probably the best Marvel Cinematic... One of the best Marvel Cinematic Universe movies. Black Widow is awesome. Captain America is awesome. Big Marvel Cinematic Universe fan. What can go wrong? I saw this with my dad. This is another t old, beat-up ticket to Universal. This was probably... Oh, man, this is only went in 2012. This wasn't for Halloween Horror Nights or anything. This was just to go to Day Day at Islands of Adventure. I went with Taylor and Haram before Haram moved. It was really, really fun. I uh, really enjoyed it. That was the first time I got to go to Harry Potter Land, try Butterbeer and everything. And I was a huge Harry... I was active in the Harry Potter community at the time. I still love Harry Potter. I'm not very active in the community anymore. But uh, at this time that the, I went to this park and I saw the Harry Potter line, I was extremely active and I cried. It was amazing. Now I got Hunger Games. When I first saw it, I thought it was amazing. When I first read the book, I thought it was amazing. Now they've pretty much waned in my eyes. I realize they're nothing special and they're not very good. However, it's a sequel. If I find the ticket here, I don't know if it will be. Catching Fire is an amazing, amazing movie. This one was meh. First Hunger Games, meh. I saw this with Alberto, um, Zach, um, and I think my mom, and I think Rachel. I haven't seen Rachel in years. Man, I'm losing touch with people. The Greg. Saw this with my, my other New York friends, the same one I saw Wolf of Wall Street with. Um, he really liked it. I thought it was okay, nothing special. We made out Phantom Menace ever since the entire time because it's Liam Neeson. Um, I enjoyed it. I mean, it wasn't anything special. It's a little too a little too fucked up to be a popcorn flick. But if it wasn't that fucked up, I would say it's a great popcorn flick. Um, CG's a little unconvincing though. First or second Percy Jackson. Did Sea of Monsters come out in 2013? I'm going to look that up. Hold on. Sea of Monsters. I am a huge fan of the Percy Jackson books. One of my favorite book series of all time. The first movie was terrible. It did come out in 2013. This was Sea of Monsters, man. Wow. Um, Percy Jackson. The Lightning Thief movie was one of the... It's probably in the top five worst movies ever made. I, I went out of the movie with Fear of Paul. It was disgustingly horrible. It was a classless movie. The Sea of Monsters, on the other hand, was a significant improvement. It was a... I could, I could confidently say this movie was good. Until the end. The last act of the movie destroyed the movie for me. So I would say it was... I would say it's an okay movie overall. If this third act didn't go the way it did, confidently I can say it was a good movie. Um, significant steps above the first one. They realized that their first one was terrible and tried their hardest. I feel like they should just reboot the Percy Jackson movie franchise as a TV show or another movie series at this point. They really destroyed it. The books are amazing. Why destroy the movies any further? 
One of Logan Lerman's best performances in the second one, obviously. First one was terrible, so his performance in that was terrible, but his best performance strikes me well. But Logan Lerman's a great actor. Um, fortune, fortune from a fortune cookie. I don't know why I have this in here. It says, don't wait for your ship to come and swim out to it. I don't know why I saved that. That's, that's a good message. Are you almost done here? Damn. Take it to Disney. When is this? I haven't been to Disney. I don't know how long. When is this? Oh my god, this was 2011. Man, that was the last time I went to Disney. We only went to Animal Kingdom, too. Wow. Went with Haram and... Oh man, I haven't seen Ario in years, either. It was me, Haram, and Ario. Taylor was there for a bit. She kind of trickled out. But, um, yeah. Fun trip, if I remember correctly. Too, I don't really remember much of it. I don't know why. Here's a... This is probably the most beat-up ticket I have. I have. I'll see if I can even read it. Um, I don't think I can read this. This would be amazing to find out what this is. See if you can read it. If you can, comment below. I can't read it. Man, oh man. Two E's. Stream? I'm actually going to try this. Let me turn on the phone flashlight even though it's day. This might help at least somewhat. Hi, it's... <gasps> I know what it is. Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides. Saw this with Dylan. I I couldn't. I'm a huge. I was a big Pirates of the Caribbean fan at the time, and not so much anymore. Still love the first movie. Still love the second movie. Don't really like the third movie anymore. Oh shit! My garbage can. Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides. I thought it was great when I saw it. I haven't seen it since, so it could not live up to my hype when I first saw it. But I thought it was great, and uh, Dylan thought it was great too. I remember at the time giving it like a 9 out of 10, but I haven't seen it since. I don't remember the plot at all, pretty much. Um, I remember there was a sexy mermaid. That's about it. That's all really, literally, I, I remember Barbosa was in the musical. That's literally all I remember. I've seen the other ones countless times. I remember nothing from On Stranger Tides. I remember none of the character original cast was in it except for Johnny Depp and Barbosa. Um, but yeah, I remember it being good. I'm, I don't know. Second to last thing in here. Is that really it? Oh wait, what's this? That's not that's nothing actually. So, second to last item is Bush Gardens ticket from May 6, thousand thirteen. This must have been when I went with my family. Uh, yeah, because that's when I made the Coaster Crusader channel because I wanted to make roller coaster videos and I never recorded anything because I got yelled at for putting my phone on the ride, and then I never made coaster videos. But yeah, Bush Gardens fun trip. That's where I found the retro game store in Tampa. Finally, the first thing I ever put in the box, saved it for last. This is when I went to the woods. I'm a classic rock is a major part of my life. Classic rock culture is just ingrained in me because my dad was obsessed with it. He'd been graining it for a young age. I'm a huge, huge classic rock fan. I'm wearing a Rolling Stone shirt. I have a ton of CDs back there. Huge classic rock fan. This was when I went uh, with my camp. I did the guitar specialty at my sleepaway camp from, in New York. And we went to the Woodstock Museum. <sighs> what a day. I just I still remember that day vividly as being one of the best days of my entire life. It was amazing to go to the Woodstock Museum and see where it all happened. Pretty much the most seminal moment in classic rock history. Woodstock happened there. And um, this was a little movie that they showed. The story of the 60s in Woodstock. Pretty good movie. I remember it being, it was a documentary, about an hour long, $5 to get in, extra, you also have tickets to the thing, I don't know where that is, but this is the first thing I put in. So now let's put everything back in the box, and uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with the box, maybe I'll do a little time capsule thing and bury it in the backyard, that would be pretty funny. See, you, see who digs it up. 
Uh, but I'm putting everything back now, so I'm just shut up. Everybody betrayed me. I'm fed up with this Jurassic World. Anyway, project's over. I did it in about 40 minutes. <laughs> Took a little shorter than I expected. I thought it was going to be a couple hours, but I did it. I did the video project that I wanted to do. Start a new chapter in my life. I thought it was great to go through all those memories. I had a great time. I hope you guys had a great time watching. Thanks, guys, for watching, and I'll see you guys next video.